Hello folks, welcome back to the channel. Thank you very much for joining me. You are always most welcome. Today, the TACOM Chieftain Mark V Mark V P. Now then, we've had a few tank reviews recently, but I've got to say, I do like a Chieftain. In fact, most people I think seem to like the Chieftain wherever you're from, they're very popular. Something about it, it's quite a sort of a, um, I was going to say a sexy tank, and perhaps not a good thing to say there's a horrible war going on at the moment, but it's it's got this sort of sloping look to it, and it's it's not overly, uh, how can I put it, it's not overly uh, endowed with uh, with armour perhaps. I mean, you've got to remember it's a late 60s, early 70s tank, but um, it's just something about it, it's quite sleek, and it, it always looks good in sort of any scheme, I think, you know. And this is the Tacom one, and I recently, well, about a year ago, in fact, I did the review of the, the 172nd Tacom, uh, which somebody bought me as a gift, I've not got around to building it yet, but I will, because that's a nice kit. Um, and it came with the little armoured car, personnel carrier, didn't it, with the uh, uh, cage on top. So this is Tacom, uh, quite a recent tool, in fact, I'm just going to wonder if we've got... They say 2015, okay. Um, but, of course, this is a tank that was sold to other territories like Iran. <laughs> and it took place in this uh, Battle of Shalmash, if I pronounced that correctly, preceding the liberation of Kora Mashar, the 242nd Battalion, 4th Brigade of the Iranian Army, 1983. Now, this is, unfortunately, one of these... Um, Situations where weapons were sold to Iran um, before the fall of the Shah, and then of course they they got Tomcats from America, they got chief and tanks from the UK, and um, hmm, perhaps with hindsight it wasn't such a wise thing we did there. But there we are. We've also got here a scheme which is for the um, the British, the Fourth or Seventh Dragoon Guards in Berlin, with the Berlin scheme. I'll zoom in so you can see this. Um, I forgot to tell you about what kit number it was, didn't I? There we go. That's the Berlin Scheme. And that's the Iranian Scheme. Now, um, I did talk about this in one of my previous videos. I'm just trying to remember which one it was. It may have been the one, I think, with the, the smaller kit about chieftains and about the Iranian use of them. The Iranians were very keen on them, but um, they had a lot of problems. There was a lot of unreliability engine trouble, whether it was they weren't really adapted for the desert as well as they might have been, I'm not sure, but I know that there were, that battle I mentioned, there were quite a lot of problems where they broke down several of them, uh, a bit of unreliability. Anyway, this is kit number 2027, and the it says on the front of the box, detailed static display plastic model kit with PE and clear parts included, individual tracks, seven types of markings, the gun can pitch up and down, and all hatches can be built in open or closed positions, which is really nice, isn't it? On this side, we get a little bit of a... shows that there are several other versions that Taco have done. They've done the Mark 10, the Mark 11. I've got a feeling they've done another version very recently. I can't remember which one that is. But here's your sprue tree map on the side. Everything bodes well, because the Tacon kits that they do with the armour are always nice, I think. So... Without further ado, I think we'll get cracking straight into this. If I remember, I think they have received a bag, I'm hoping. Yes, they do. Yes, they do. So we can open these. Uh, this isn't my kit. It belongs to a relative of mine, in fact. Um, so let's get them all out. And have a proper look. It's the last tack on the tank. There's an absolute beauty of that leopard, I think. Isn't it? One of the leopards. A few leopards. I do love a chieftain, there's just something about it, it just looks right, doesn't it? Very purposeful looking tank indeed. Let's pop that over there. So, big instructions. Now the one criticism I, I always do have of Tacom is they have instructions with very little writing, if any, in. I mean, they're just diagrams, that really kind of annoys me. But what is nice for this one is straight away they've given us a proper quality sort of instruction booklet with some description on the front, which they often don't do. So let's have a read of this. So, I'll zoom you out so it's not quite as, um, uh, as uh, over-focused for you. So it says, development of what was to become the Chieftain began in 1946 as a universal... 1946? As the universal tank concept. Development was long and very convoluted with many dead ends and radical concepts that were investigated along the way. But the final result was the first true main battle tank, MBT. 
The Chieftain was basically a conventional design with the engine at the rear, central fighting compartment and forward centrally located driver's position. Manned by a crew of four, it had a driver, gunner, loader and a commander. Several radical features however, made, did however make it into the final design. These included a reclined driving position which allowed for a lower silhouette, as well as saying it would be a bit sexy and very rakish, and a more steeply sloped front llama, an unexpected benefit of which to give the driver a very comfortable bed. <laughs> the rifled L11 120mm gun, don't forget a lot of them now are not rifled are they? Uh, it was designed for use with, to use separate propellant and projectiles with all the explosive material stored in refrigerated charge bins below the level of the turret ring to improve survivability. So that's further at the back, isn't it? Ahead of the engine, I think. Interesting, I didn't know that. Chilled. That's interesting. Um, both the front, sorry, both the turret front and the hull forward of the turret were huge one-piece castings which for many years were proof against Russian tank or artillery rounds. The L60 multi-fuel engine multi -fuel, was yet another radical feature but sadly this proved to be the Achilles heel of the Chieftain led to its deserved reputation for unreliability which I mentioned. With a decent diesel engine the Chieftain would have been an absolute world beater. Yeah, I suppose it's asking a lot. I can imagine the filters and things must become clogged of using diesel petrol. It, it sounds complicated. But anyway, the Mark V was the definitive chieftain and incorporated improvements from the previous marks and the extensive overseas testing. These include improved commander's cupola, upgraded MBC pack, MBC. don't know what that is, sorry I forgive my ignorance, fire control system, commander's and gunner's sights, increased ammunition storage and a thermal sleeve for the main armament. Thermal sleeve, okay. A 50 caliber ranging gun was used in the initial Mark V. This version was mass produced for the British Army and over 900 chieftains were built to this standard and also exported to Iran, which is the 5P. Later Mark Vs had the ranging gun removed and laser sight installed and designated as 5L. The chieftain was for many years the most powerful tank in all of NATO if not the world and was rightly feared by the Soviet stroke Russians. Just how effective the Mark V could be was shown when a reduced squadron of Kuwaiti when a reduced squadron of Kuwaiti Mark Vs engaged an entire battalion of Iraqi T seventy twos in the first Gulf War and destroyed at least fifty three of the Iraqi tanks without any losses on the battlefield, leading to the Iraqi the remaining Iraqi tanks fleeing. Wow. Kuwaiti tanks then withdrew safely over the Saudi border due to lack of ammunition. <laughs> <coughs> Excuse me. Wow, that's, that's a really good um, bit of history there. I really like that. Look at the camera right. It's not quite right. Okay, so let's have a look inside. A bit of that basic stuff. Sprue trees. And then this, this is why I get annoyed. They don't title anything. I just wish they'd do that. It just annoys me a little bit. They're always very clear images, you know, it's not the artwork, it's just the, whoever decides that they don't want a title. You know, it should say hull, suspension, wheels, blah blah. Anyway, so let's have a closer look because we really have got one of the absolute stars of the 70s here in terms of armour. So you've got your, your main wheels, you've got your idlers and your sprocket wheels being made up. Nice looking suspension. I think that's, yeah, the assembly's kind of melded in one. And then you've got this like a double bogey system. It's a bit like, um, reminds me of the Comet. The Comet? The one at the end of the Second World War. So it's, yeah, that was the forerunner of this. Then you've got to make up many, many links. Oh dear, oh dear. But you've got a um, simple bathtub, bathtub style hull. And you've got your top of your, um, your hull going in there in one piece. It looks okay, it looks very straightforward. Then we've got all the fiddly bits, so you've got the back uh, wall, so to speak, the rear of the tank, and then you've got um, cooling system, um, exhaust it looks like, is that, is that the exhaust? So that's the exhaust isn't it I think, yeah, here. Yeah. Um, but <laughs> here's another classic, one of these Chinese uh, foibles that they have, so look at, the, look at the sequencing, it says four at the top. And then it shows this going on, but you have to build it there first, and they put that underneath here. This is what I, I sometimes complain about, that, that, that everything's back to front. So why don't you put this here, 
this should be down below because it shows it all assembled you, you look at that you think oh where's that one then where's that part well no you haven't built it yet you're going to build it next isn't it daft that's really stupid anyway then you, you're building up these storage bins at the back and you've got your lights and your protector guards for the lights at the front going on there then you've got your driver's hatch which is a very reclined looking position isn't it and you've got the uh, periscopes for him as well side stowage bins and side skirts going on complete with um, some grills for the engine and you've got your tow rope and then you've got more stowage bins going on the top and yet more stowage bins and you're sort of repeating it on the other side of what you've just seen so that's like a two-sided repeat isn't it you've got driver's mirrors here down at the bottom which look quite very road-like aren't they hmm. then you get onto the turret so We've got the, the cupola ring, several hatches, uh, you've got your grenade discharges, smoke discharges here, um, then you've got your, uh, is that the laser, is that the later one, the laser rangefinder, or is that just the periscope, I think it's just the periscope for the commander I think. And then you've got the commander's hatch going in there, and you've got the side bins, um, I'm not sure if it's got an automatic ejection system for the empty shells. I don't think it does on this, but I could be wrong. But you've certainly got these baskets on the side, which does, does look like it might be for that, doesn't it? Chieftain experts amongst you, please shout up, no problem. Um, and then you've got your, base, your lower ring for the turret, and your mounting for the gun. And then here comes the 120mm gun. And the gun mask. Uh, mantle. It's quite it's quite neat the way it goes into the turret, isn't it? It's not the big, you know, glasses plate mantlet that a lot of them have. Interesting. And then you've got this, um, was it 30mm machine gun? General purpose machine gun on the top, and then you've got storage bins on the left side, and storage bin on the back. You've got basket on the left. Sorry, basket on the left, storage bin on the back, I should say. And there's quite a lot of storage, isn't there? External storage there going on. Quite a lot indeed. Uh, and then that's it. So it's fairly straightforward as a build. It looks quite quite easy. Just a little bit fiddly, obviously a lot of parts, but um, I think the concept looks very straightforward. So then we've got the 5P. This is the Iranian version here. And you've got all your markings, call-outs. There we go. Better. Again, I do like the way that Tacom did this. The only thing I don't like is that they always specify only MIG. MIG ammo for the actual paint, which is kind of annoying. Though. Then we've got the 5 stroke 5P again. This is, I think, this is the British Army this time, definitely, because it's got British Army yeah, little Union flag on it. This one is the Iranian version. And then again, another Iranian, different battalion, and another one. So There's quite a few Iranian options, actually. And then finally, you've got the Berlin scheme. The urban colour scheme, so it blends in with the tower blocks. Not quite sure how well it blends in. And then you have this really nice, which is off the cover, of course, of the box as well. Lovely artwork there, of it in, you know, downtown, I don't know, somewhere in uh, Iran, or maybe on the border with Iraq, uh, having a shootout. There's a T72 in the, sorry, T62, I think, in the background, has been blown away. Very nice. Um, yeah, um, looks good, looks good. Just wish they'd do some titles in the instructions, but apart from that, quite like that actually. Okay, so what have we got here? Decals now. I don't really. Oh, yep, it's resealable. I was going to say, I don't really want to open it if it's not resealable, but it is. There we go. Oh, my mouth just ripped. It must have had a tear in it. That's very strange. I think maybe I'll have a nick in it. I'm going to be in trouble. Very odd. I've never had that before. I think it was nicked already and I must have just pulled it and it just tore away a little bit. Anyway, we've got some decals, mainly Iranian because the British ones don't carry a lot of markings of course. Not for battalion stuff, you know. Let's bring you in here. <coughs> mm, they're very nice looking markings. They're a bit, they're quite matte. That's not a bad thing on an armour kit is it really? It's probably ideal. Your little British uh, Union flags there at the top right, and the, just the left of it is the British number plates. And then you've got your various uh, different regiments and battalions for the Iraqi army, 
uh, Iranian, pardon me, Iranian army. Um, and that this, it's written in Arabic, so I'm afraid I can't tell you what it says, but it has got some, uh, some markings, some wording on the side of that. Then we've got our photo etch. Get some focus, there we go, photo etch. This looks nice, all the grills. Very good. Nice and thin as well. Okay. Now then, we've got a big bag of track links. Oh, these look fun, don't they? <laughs> ah, right, okay, that's going to take a little while. Um, they look very nicely moulded. Can't think anything wrong with those. Can't see any ejector pin marks or any flash or anything. They look very nice. Good, good, good. And then we've got the track pads. These are the rubber that you spray these black, I think. These are the actual pads that go between on the track links. Uh, very typical of the sort of sheep and, uh, and other main battle tanks of this era. So there are one, two, three, four, six sprues of those. So yes, it's going to be a little bit repetitive as they always are. Take a little while. If not a lot of feature. Remember, there's no ejector pins on them. Those are nice and clean as well. I'll put those away because it's going to be a bit boring. We've got some clear parts. Sorry, why have I, why have I not put those away? So long ago. I think I need to get this back in its bag. Because, let me go straight away so let's put that back in there. Very strange way it seems to be torn for why. Don't think I was heavy handed with that. That's a bit strange. Never had before. Anyway. Um, yep, yeah, that one goes there, that one goes there, and we're on to the clear part. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Right. So. There's nothing worse than looking at the green screen. I'm sure that I made a New Year's resolution to not keep doing that. Oops, sorry. <laughs> it's easier said than done. You're trying to talk, coordinate yourself, think about what you're going to say next, what you're going to pick up next. It's not as easy as it looks, trust me. Now then, here's the clear parts, and it's mainly the cupola glass, uh, periscope glass, I should say. But we have got, it looks like it's got uh, a clear window you can put in on the commander's hatch, doesn't it? I don't know why you would do that, but. Hmm. And there's a, a little door there, is it? I'm not quite sure what they are actually. Got little wipers, little wiper blades on some of those uh, periscopes at the bottom. See them? Very nice. Very very good. Yeah, nice clay parts. No problem there. So far so good. And then I'm going to get into green screen again. Oh, I think I have to pay you a, a pound or a dollar every time I put the green screen up, really, but I think I might be back bankrupt pretty quick. <laughs> try not to do that. You've got to try and remember to put something in front of the viewer while I'm fiddling about, and sometimes I won't forget, so. Sorry. Alright then. What's the big stuff? Oh, we've got the big stuff, right? Let's go with the, the meat and potatoes of the chassis and the whole. That's going to be great, isn't it? Now then. I'm looking forward to this because I do like the cheap ones. So. I, used to, I remember I had an Airfix cheap thing, it wasn't the best one ever. Uh, but I cherished it, you know, I really liked it. I just like the way the, the tag looks. Here we go then. So, turn you in. Get a proper look. This is the top and bottom of the hull. And I've got to say, it looks really rather splendid. There we go. And it fits together. Plus, it says, squeeze in there. How does that work? Oh no, I see. He goes on. Oh, yeah, there we go. It's perfect. It's perfect fit. I'm just not putting it in the correct location underneath. Got to got to pop it in. Mm. The owner's watching this and he's thinking, "Don't you get the glue out, man." <laughs> Don't get the glue out. Right, there you go. Nice fit there. And you can see here, we've got some really nice detail. You've got, there's the driver's uh, hatch here. 
this very reclined position that he has. Um, I have to say, having seen a lot of these um, Ukraine war videos, it, it scares me when I look at these hatches now because they have so little time to get out when they get hit with one of these um, missiles. Um, although I think the Chieftain is actually better than the T-72 that the Russians are using currently, but uh, they don't seem that great to me at all. But um, as they said, the problem with the Chieftain was its engine. Uh, it was very unreliable, fortunately. More unreliable than a Ferrari Formula One car. Oops. <laughs> Less said about that, the better at the moment. They're not having a very good run, are they? But anyway, look at the grills. They've done it really nicely. And you've got some lovely... I'll just separate them. You've got some really nice uh, riveting detail here as well. Look at that. That's really well done. You've got the classic sort of rails on the top that enables the soldiers to have a better, better grip. That's a really nice piece of moulding that, and the, the lower part is a little bit simple, but um, a lot of the detail of course on these is actually on the suspension which you attach later, so that's very nice. Pop that back in, I think that's a nice uh, hole indeed. All the little brackets and everything to reinforce it across the top of the hull, that's that one. Now, turret. I'll we'll just see you out of for this. There you go. Shift and turn. You see, it's such a, I have to say, sort of a sexy, slender, uh, very rakish looking beast, isn't it, the Chieftain? So, it's nice to fit there. Yeah, there we go. It's a very, it's almost a stealthy sort of. Reminds me of the Merkaba in, in some respects. It's very rakish, isn't it? The turret. Yeah, that's very low profile, which is always good for resisting shell rounds from the enemy. Got some fantastic detail on the top here. All your little uh, bolts and fittings for the, uh, the cupola hatches. Um, you've got all your uh, mounting points for where the stowage bins are going to go on the side. So your gun's going to come out here, out of the mantlet, and yeah, nice tank. Very nicely moulded that. It's got this sort of a, here it's got like a high grip, sort of a crackle finish, and here it's smoother. I don't know if that's coming out on the camera or not. Beautiful, yeah. Even got little wires and detail on the side here. See that? Very, very nicely moulded. Real crisp precision job that. That is very nice. I'm loving it already. Oh, I've failed. This is the little shroud for the actual um, for the gun that comes out of the turret. Which is uh, yeah, that's been uh, that's been well done, hasn't it? In rubber, like a rubberized plastic. Yeah, it's quite soft. That's nice. That does belong in there, so we get back where it belongs. Super. Now then, what we've got in here? Quite a small bag here. Let's see what we have. Okay. Well, we've got the grills, uh, gills and grills, so to speak, for top of the engine on the top of the chassis there. And then you've got various brackets and uh, and then you've got these stowage boxes that go on the side, uh, side and rear. They're really ni nicely moulded down there, there's no flash here, there's no ejector pins. Well there are ejector pins but they put them on the inside which is irrelevant, you know, it just doesn't matter. It's still on the inside of the stowage bin. But they don't put them anywhere where you can see them, so not at all a problem. Is that one? <coughs> now, what have we got here? Sorry, green screen, alert. I think I'm always worse with tanks doing the green screen thing because there's so, there's so many small fiddly parts but it's easy to lose one's uh, thread. Very, very gentle. Rips. Oh, look at that. Yes. 
So this is the sort of side of the rear turret. And then you've got all these climbing, um, well it's actually the sort of cage isn't it for filming the cage at the side of the turret where they often put spent shells. But look at the welding there, that's lovely. Mm. Hmm. Hmm. Excellent work that. So crisp isn't it? There's never any flush or any horrible rubbish that you get with Ravel and others. To have it to a fine art tack on. Really nice. Here's a big one. Chunky old sprue here. Let's um, see what we have. There's going to be a lot of things to look at here. So we've got a lot of stowage bins, and I'll zoom you in. Lots and lots of items. We've got hooks, towing hooks. Source pipes, yeah. and then we've got stowage bins. We've got the these are the mirror stalks for the mirrors here. <laughs> Very fine, aren't they? Stowage bins, lots of them. All different types, different shapes and sizes. That looks like the end of the transmission here. Rest the drive, uh, drive shaft in fact isn't it? I think it's driving from, it'll be driving from the back I guess won't it? Is that right? Is it drive from the back or from the front? Yeah from the back obviously. Yeah so it's the transmission exit there and, and then you've got all these little stowage boxes that run along the side as well. That's really nice. Wow. Very, very nice that. Nothing at all I've not liked so far or whatsoever. Apart from the, apart from the lack of headings on the instructions, there's been nothing. Whoa, now then, now then, look at that. Cupola, look at this. Beautiful moulding here. Absolutely superb. That's nice, isn't it? What a lovely uh, bit of plastic moulding. You got another of the storage bins. This, I think, it's the, this is the big one on the back. And then you've got various hatches and bin lids, so to speak. That looks like the driver's hatch, I think. Am I right? No, it's the uh, gunner's hatch, I think. This one. Then look at the fine detail with all these fixtures and fittings and bolt heads you can see here. Wow. There's your general purpose machine gun here. Another hatch. Wow. There's all sorts of towing eyes. Very fine little pieces here. Very, very beautifully moulded. Smoke discharges. There you go. Very, you know, they're absolutely uh, reminiscent of a chieftain, aren't they? Those. Very nice. Perfect moulding, you know. Exquisite. No other word for it. So. Now we've got some big bits, oh yes, we've got some major important parts here. Let's have a look. We've got the side skirts. There we are. Side skirts, you're looking at the back, looking forwards as we run along here. Great detail. They're like handrails, aren't they, these? Handrails? I think so. And then you've got your tow cables, which are actually moulded in plastic, which is unusual. They often use them in... Uh... It's very good though, in fairness. 
I can see why they didn't put some braided wire in because it does look quite scale like. I think that gets painted the right colour. That'll come up a treat. And then we've got your great big 120mm gun. Look at that, complete with all its jacket on it. It's very nicely moulded. It is in two parts, so you're going to have to. Some nasty... There is some flash on the inside of that. You see it? Flash lugs. Don't like those very much. Easily taken care of, don't get me wrong, it's not going to ruin the model, but it's just a bit of work. A bit of a shame, because we haven't seen much of that. But, yes. The moulding, the detail there, is just gorgeous, really, isn't it? Just look at that. Smashing. And you've got your rear wall at the back. That's very, very good. Very nice moulding. Yeah, just see about the lugs on the back of the, the barrel, because obviously I'm always nervous about barrels that join down the centre from the seam, you know, can be problematic. I don't know how good their fit is, if I'm honest. But I still haven't actually built my Tacom, little Tacom. But, um, give them the benefit of the doubt, I assume it's going to be a good fit. I think it'll be okay, you know. And then just one bag left, which has got a twin double screw. The wheel and suspension is a bit fun, isn't it? I'll take them out because trying to get one out would be impossible. Look at this big old, uh, big old sprue. Wow. Yeah, then. But again, look at the moulding quality. Look at these wheels with the bolts. Look. That's nice, isn't it? Oh, yes. Very, very fine. Got all your wheels, you've got your idle wheels, your drive sprockets, drive wheels, and then you've got your sort of a looks like a rubber tyre, isn't it? A rim that goes around, like a, like a spacer actually. And then on this side, you've got all these very, very fine parts, yeah, exhausts, you've got various little. Uh, Protectors for the headlights. And it looks like it's your what's that? Rear suspension? No, it's the suspension, isn't it? Yeah, it's the bogus suspension here. And you've got it here and here. Without the outer frame around it, the uh, actuators. Then you've got uh, the return idler rollers here, or idler wheels, they go on the top. And Suspension, so the, the springs. Yeah, it's a pity they couldn't have made them real springs like we got on the, is it the Merkava? Can't remember which, which kit now. One of the ones I reviewed, it had the uh, proper springs on it. Leopard, I think, had it, didn't it? Leopard. There you go. And then again, you've got some very, very tiny parts here. Very, very finely moulded. Um, yeah. Wow. I think really um, it's it's a bit of a classic case really of uh, what is not to like here really. It's the thing that I've seen, you know. Apart from that gun battle, it's, it's not a deal killer or anything, it's just a bit fiddly you have to knock about getting your you know, your cutters in there to take out that flash. But I wouldn't sort of be too harsh about it. I think that and the uh, the instructions not having titles, maybe knock half a point off. I don't think that's unreasonable, is it? Can't be too generous, can we? <laughs> they, are, they are identical, aren't they? Yes, it's the way I've got it, the other way up. But they're beautifully moulded, aren't they? I mean, there's no flash, general flash on any of the sprues at all. So you can probably guess where this is going. So. A very, a very nice looking tube in that. I think that'll build up. Very enjoyable kit to make. I like it. So, I think I'm going to give it what? Mm. Just a couple of very small markdowns for those things I've mentioned. Uh, maybe I need to be marked down for my packaging. So there we go. That is a stunning 
cheap to, to be honest. It's also very, uh, it doesn't look too challenging or difficult. It looks very, uh, it's got all the detail, but it doesn't look stupidly complicated or anything like that. I'm going to give it 9.5 out of 10. Lost a little bit because of that gun barrel. You're going to need to fiddle around with it. You might, you might want to buy yourself, a, um, I was going to say a metal barrel, but it, mm, it's more complicated, isn't it? Because you've got this, the sleeve around it, so you're probably better going with the kit one, I suppose, really. Unless you get a good resin one, that would do the trick. But I think 9.5 out of 10 is a fair score. A very nice kit indeed. Um, I'm not sure I'd have gone with that particular artwork, even though it's very nice. Um, but anyway, what did you think? I'd rate that as one of the nicest tanks up there in the top four or five tanks I've ever reviewed, I think, really. Very, very nice. Hope you'll give me ten out of ten, at least nine and a half. And if you uh, haven't subscribed already, don't forget to do so. And if you have done, then don't forget to dig that notification bell, smash that like button, and uh, we'll be hoping to see you again in the very near future with some more reviews or interesting items to look at. And in the meantime, thanks very much for joining me. Take care of yourselves. Thank you and bye for now.